Mardi Gras 2024. Hi, my name is Scott Hinkle. I am an alumni here at CFNI from way back, but I've been privileged to help lead this Mardi Gras outreach for several years. And it's, a, it's an honor to see how Jesus works through those of us who come together and move forward. Light works best in darkness. Mardi Gras, you look at what's going on today and you have to realize it is a religious celebration at its roots. It's a 40-day celebration, and it all builds up to what's called Fat Tuesday, which is the day basically of feasting and partying, and the next day is Ash Wednesday. So basically you feast, you party, and then you go to church and repent on the next day. That is the essence of it all. It's a far cry from what it is today. I wasn't there when it, in the, in the very beginning, in the late 70s. But what I believe and what I understand is this. Uh, I've been told of a farmer from Iowa that came down to Mardi Gras to witness. And he went down by himself. He began to pass out tracts and share the gospel. Then he began to say, then he began to pray, excuse me, send laborers. And CF and I, in, in the latter part of the 70s, sent a van load of students. And they've continued for the better part uh, of till today. At times, there's been over 200 students that have gone uh, to spread the gospel there. I mentioned that in the late 70s, CF and I sent a van load of students there. My wife and I were ministering in the Gulf Coast area in Mississippi, working with uh, women coming off the streets in a recovery home. And when CF and I came in, in those early years, we went into the city uh, to witness with them and work the streets. So some of the years passed. Uh, the Lord called us to move back to Dallas from Los Angeles and working in Hollywood to come back to Dallas. And as I was driving across West Texas, barren West Texas in a U-Haul truck, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Scott, take a team to Mardi Gras, New Orleans. And I know the school had already uh, been, been doing that. But I felt like, personally, with something so horrific morally and spiritually going on within 500 miles of Dallas, I personally felt responsible to do something. So we began to partner and work together with, uh, with the team that was being led uh, by David Butterball at that time and um, go down and let's make a difference. And the great thing is not only are we leading people to Jesus, but we've been able to help strengthen and encourage local believers there as well. During the Mardi Gras outreach, I had the opportunity of holding a sign that said, tell me your dream. This led me to encounter a young girl who told me that her dream was to be a doctor. I asked her if I could pray for her and she said yes. After I prayed for her, I asked her if she knew Jesus, and she said yes, and that she went to church regularly on Sundays. She then walked away, and I blessed her, and I prayed that God would keep her safe during her time at Mardi Gras. Shortly after that, she came back, running up to me with a confused look on her face. She asked me, why do you and I believe in the same Jesus, yet you are here preaching the gospel, and I am here on the other side? After this, I was able to share my testimony with her and how God delivered me from living in that very lifestyle. Then God was able to show her that she is a daughter and that there's still a call and a purpose on her life. And she left really contemplating what God was trying to do in her life and what he was trying to speak to her. What's impacted me most, this past year, we had a team we had 45 students that were part of a group of about 105 all together. And when you go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, you have a million people getting crazy drunk, naked, weird, and insane. And I would, I would, I would venture a good guess, none of them have Jesus, Christianity, or church on their mind. And yet in three short days, this team individually engages with and prays 
with 1,482 people to give their life to Jesus, uh, be reconciled as backsliders for healing and so many other needs. It's not a crusade setting where you preach and give a massive altar call. Uh, it is when this army wades into the moral cesspool as emissaries of Christ and his power and his spirit and his word and see lives change. This marks me. I see that if God can do something there, why not anywhere? If God can make a difference moving through believers who are passionate about the relationship, they pray fervently and they're willing to step out and share the gospel. Wow, that gives me hope for what goes on there. That God can use any one of us, any place, any time, anywhere, if we'll step out of ourselves, get out of the boat, so to speak, and let Jesus move through us in a very unique setting. Why is this worthwhile? I'll tell you why, it helps us fulfill what Jesus said we are. Let me explain. Jesus chose two elements out of the 118 elements on the earth to describe the life of every Christian. He said, you're the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Those two elements influence and affect everything they come in contact with. And so as a Christian, we are designed to influence other people. Secondarily, in Matthew 4, 19, Jesus said this, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Here's a simple interpretation. If we are really following Jesus, we're fishing for others. If we're not fishing, then my friends, we are not fully following. So this outreach really puts us in a place where it's us, the Spirit of God, the Word of God, people that don't know Christ, and our lives is vessels. And we see how God can move mightily through anybody who will let Him do it His way. And it helps us walk. Now, not, not everyone is going to go down to Bourbon Street or horrific urban inner city situations. But God wants to use every one of us in the circle of our own life to lift him up and bring others to him, no matter what we feel like our ministry gifting or calling is. I love to tell people I'm an introvert by nature. I am not an extrovert, you know, the typical picture of that, no. But yet Jesus paid no attention to my natural wiring when I surrendered my life to him. So I urge people, come and go. God may birth something in you and through you, and it will mark you for the rest of your walk on, the, on this earth. You guys are gonna change the world. Amen. Okay? It's one person at a time. It's just one person at a time. So you guys touch everyone you pray over. I am most of believing that the seeds you plant today are gonna blow you away. They're gonna blow you away. And each one of you are gonna go on and look back at this day one day and just go, wow, God, look what you did. This year at Mardi Gras, I got to see so many students step out in boldness, in courage, and learn that evangelism is for everyone. We're all meant to preach the gospel and love on people. And so being able to hold signs like free hugs or tell me about your first love, it normalizes us that we're supposed to have conversations with strangers, with drug addicts, with people half naked. We're meant to love on the world. And so this past couple of days that I got to go to Mardi Gras, I realized we're meant to love on people, even those that are uncomfortable to talk to. In the Mardi Gras outreach, as we were out on the streets, one of my teammates points to this homeless man and tells me to go pray for him. So I walk up to this man and I ask him the question that was on my sign, which is, what's on your bucket list? And he answered me with that he would like to return to school and go back and continue his studies. So we got to pray for him for that and we got to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to him. And he said that he was already saved but it was very hard for him to get into the Word and live out this life with Jesus. And so I felt led by the Holy Spirit to ask him if he had heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he said he had never heard about it, so we got to explain that the Holy Spirit is a helper and a provider that, that will walk this life out with you and help you with Christ. And so he was like, I want that. So we got to pray over him the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and he got baptized right there. If you are someone who is considering the Mardi Gras outreach, I just want to encourage you and say, do not be afraid to step out and say yes. There is so much that God wants to do through you and what he has placed in your life. And that he has given us the authority to go and preach the gospel. So now it is your time to go.